Kay Clark makes standalone sculpture that looks like it belongs in a fairy tale. But by taking them out of a story, she emphasizes the incredible amount of personality that's in each face, making us wonder who and what they are. Kay, can you tell us a little bit about the themes that you're exploring in your sculpture? Sure. The work is really more about the balance of man and animal and not so much about the hierarchy. My work is really much more about what we're kind of forgetting, the relationship that is there. Picturing it like this, there's, there's more thought about what there is that's a connection and not a, not a distance between us. So do you think of these uh, characters as almost human? I really just like their past and present to be sort of mysterious. They don't, you know, I want people to have a real reaction, a gut reaction. But um, I called the show Perfect Strangers because I did want that mystery to stay. I've heard uh, people respond to your work by saying that the sculptures resemble you. Or do you think a little bit of your own face creeps in? Oh, definitely. I mean, I don't, I don't cast the faces. I, I start from scratch. It's soft clay. For me, the way the sculpture works is people really invest in the face and then let the body of the animal come after. And that's kind of when it hits you. How do you choose? your animal forms. The animal forms and the hides are limited to what, what's already done in the taxidermy world. You know, I, I go through a catalog and think, oh, this would be beautiful, that would be beautiful. There's always this wonderful variety in the quality of the skin. The larger animals sort of have thicker skin and, and there's a lot more play <laughs> in the skin. So you're already crafting fantastical creatures, you know, who are neither human nor animal, but have you considered um, pushing it further and making an even more kind of folkloric or unusual animal? It's, it's definitely a thought. I mean, I finally got in the faces to a point where the animal is sort of the secondary thing, and so many people know so little about the natural world <laughs> that, uh, that it's just sort of a symbol of a wild creature, and it's not so specifically cougar, for example. You know, many people won't know what what kind of animal this is, or what kind of animal that is. Um, so, so I actually think there is going to be room for play, although I'm not so sure people will even pick up on it. How have people responded, you know, particularly to the faces? Oh, there's a variety. I, I mean, I definitely get the people who are not happy with the work, you know, they find it disturbing, but I really have pushed the expressions and faces to not be monstrous, to really be sympathetic and appealing and I'm even thinking of your sculpture titled uh, Little Girl. Yeah, that one was interesting for me because I really, when I first did it, a child creature is just monstrous. <laughs> it took me a long time to get that to look vulnerable and um, have the sort of relationship that I wanted. And, and she is particularly on the floor, so there's a the, the, you know, really vulnerable position also. But um, the one thing I'm really insisting on is that the craftsmanship be very visible. I don't want these to read as Hollywood, and I don't want them to read as synthetic. I want it to be obvious that this is the leather that was on the animal, so it's a transformation. It's not two things stuck together. I use the lids, the natural eyelids of the animal. I, I really try to have some balance between the elements of the skin and then what I've pushed to be sort of human-like. <laughs> How did you come across that idea originally of, of making this animal? I was reading, I was doing sort of rudimentary video about human expression and reading a book by Ian Tattersall called Becoming Human. And one chapter was really interesting about how our faces evolved to be extremely expressive and how that developed society because we could read each other like that. Um, so I, I looked into what taxidermy was and found it was just leather and foam. How long does it take you to make a, an average sculpture or? Oh gosh, it really varies. I was able to do the bear sculpture in this exhibit in no time, and I thought, yay, I've got it down. <laughs> and then other ones took an enormous amount of time. And a lot of them have features that are already so readable, like a, like a, a beard or horns, you know, can really lead to a devilish look, and so it takes time to get them to have a more sympathetic look. I thought of that with the coyote pack, for instance. Mm -hmm. What were you aiming for with that? With that one, um, it's called Trouble, because I wanted it to look sort of like Trouble. I, I was really hoping for more humor in that one. I've really developed the portrait quality of these, and they've gotten serious in that way, and so that one I wanted to have a little humor and a, and a variety of faces. Well, it sounds like there is an infinite variety of ways that you could take your work. And we'll look forward to your next show. Great, thank you.